Uh, welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. Uh, this is Jinx, and uh, basically, I think uh, we know everyone who's on the call at this point right now. Um, no shadow calls my ass. We've we've certainly had some good shadow calls. But uh, that being said, it is the day before Thanksgiving, and hardly anyone's here. So, uh, for the purpose of recorded updates, I will uh, just put out there, uh, Fred. You guys got any uh, Grove updates to share? I'm going to say nothing to report. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Excellent. And uh, Zach, any updates from the uh, Foundation side? Uh, yeah, we just did the cycle updates, which are in the forum. Um, I think they're actually probably still pretty high up in this. Yeah, right here. Um, I'll post them again. And then we're also going to uh, put out the budget if we haven't yet. I don't know if it went out uh, earlier today or it's going to go out in the next day. But yeah, just keep your eye on those um, and definitely weigh in on those if you have any thoughts or opinions. Um, and then we'll have our community call next week. So um, we'll be going over a ton of stuff, so just spread the news. It's going to be a big one. Beautiful. Shane, you got anything kicking? Uh, I mean, we're really working on testnet stuff and uh, uh, some wallet stuff right now. But uh, yeah, staying busy. Sweet. And Ramiro, I know you guys uh, just pushed a big update to Pocket Scan. You want to talk about that real quick? Of course. Uh, well, we did what you asked for. We added the uh, wrap pocket both in Pocket Scan and Pocket Money. So now you can track it. It's really interesting. We have three percent of all the liquid po of all the pocket out there is wrap pocket. Quite a lot. Nice. And uh, also we updated the Explore section and we added the gateways. It's heavily dominated by uh, the, the folks from Gru, but we expect that Nudis starts growing anytime, so you can track it from there and also PNF can easily share the, the proof of what they are charging each gateway from that page. That's the idea, so enjoy. <laughs> I love it. Those are great updates from everybody so far. And uh, since that's all we have on the schedule now, and it's a small call, I mean, I'll I'll put it out there, open floor. If anybody's got any questions or topics they want to bring up, by all means, feel free. Uh, I, there is one small update. I think Shane didn't mention it, but uh, finally, the the PR from the Max Chains check was rolled back to the initial version so there is no more controversy there and we are going to go back to the version that we all voted on so everybody's happy i think we'll need, only need to make the transition a little more carefully when we and if we decide to apply the the reduction of the max maximum number of chains but that's a good news for everyone i think Beautiful. Other thoughts and updates? I have a small one, just uh, letting everybody know that we've obviously been making a bunch of Discord changes. Um, we're going to be making another big set of changes probably this week. And just so everybody's aware, we, we feel the pain of being scattered through Telegram, Discord, email, all these different places. So um, we're trying to move all of our conversations, like work-related conversations, into the Discord. So you're going to see us reaching out to shut down Telegram, private DMs and chats, and um, pull everything into the Discord. And as part of that, um, let us know if things are confusing, don't work. You know, I, I just am looking for feedback generally on if this is better and if you feel... Um, you know, the idea is to have more conversations in fewer channels, so that way we have a lot more transparency and open communication. Um, so yeah, just looking for feedback on that over the next week. And then all of PNF is committed to bringing all of their conversations into Discord uh, starting December 1. So yeah, just keep in mind, we're trying to streamline a bunch of the noise. Um, there will still be conversations in the Poctopus Den. We'll never take that away from you, Jinx, but um, 
yeah, work stuff should should start happening in Discord. Beautiful. I know it's been a long time coming with trying to centralize conversations in uh, one platform. So, yeah, the the dilemma of you know everything needs to be decentralized, but centralizing information is like the easiest way to find it. So, yeah. <laughs> thanks, y'all. Any other thoughts, topics, questions? Concerns, compliments. Breezy's typing. The chain updates in Discord has not been updating. Uh, I don't even know when the last time we touched that. Um, I don't know if it even survived the migration from AWS to GCP. Um, I'm pretty sure, though, that the repo is open source, so if someone wants to take it and run it, be my guest. Oh, look. And also, I don't think that we have one necessarily in uh, in the pocket Discord right now, but for anyone who is using uh, TweetShift, uh, a while back they went premium only, which is 25 bucks a year. So if you haven't seen your uh, tweet feeds update in a while, that's why. Anaski asks, when nodies will forward back relays to the network? Uh, I believe they're in the process of doing that right now. I saw Blade uh, in the den yesterday uh, indicate that they are in the process of ramping up, and they they thought they had about 100 million relays that they would be sending over in short order daily. Uh, so hoping to see that soon. I don't have a hard answer on that, but that's what they were talking about yesterday. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, on that topic, uh, uh, do you expect to have inflation again? Come into the network after we have this new re this relays coming back. Uh, I suppose we have this this price today mainly because we have uh, good news on the network, but also because we have uh, low uh, um, low uh, low inflation. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that it's a combination of of a number of different things, but. Um, there are fewer nodes on the network right now, and there are fewer relays. So as the relays ramp back up with fewer nodes, that means that the uh, the rewards will be a little bit higher, uh, especially given that uh, I believe the foundation adjusted the RTTM on Monday based on the new numbers. So, uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. That will bring back some equilibrium. I hope so. Yes, exactly that. They only update the RTTM once a week. So, you know, if you get a big drop in relays or a big growth in relays, for that matter, uh, in the middle of the week or early in the week, uh, you're not going to see a difference in the rewards served until the following Monday when the next update is. Hmm. Okay. I, I also noticed something very weird this week. Uh, I mean, starting yeah, starting the, uh, the the end of last week. I see uh, too much bandwidth uh, on on my side. I mean, I am only running few uh, few uh, few nodes, but uh, I see uh, my bandwidth consumption completely uh, doubled. Uh, I I I don't have any explanation why this happens, and I just want to share that with you and see if anyone has any idea or if it had to, happens to someone else. Hmm. Anybody have uh, any insight on, you know, if block size has increased or something? 
doesn't seem like that would be a thing. I can't understand why there would be yeah. any reason. Are you saying that it doesn't correlate to increased traffic on your side? Like your nodes aren't getting more traffic? No, no. Definitely less traffic. I mean, I, I'm running now 10% of what I used to serve uh, when we get uh, when we had three relays before. Uh, and it was uh, the same bandwidth till uh, last week, the end of last week. Just have a surge in, in bandwidth consumption. And still uh, the same relays. Uh, I mean, so, something uh, uh, similar to what we have today on on the, the uh, on, on the yeah. network. No, nothing different. Ramiro suggested uh, in chat that uh, maybe they're bundling requests to cheat the portal. Ah, I mean, how would that? How would how would his nodes be able to unpack, like unzip? A or, or one request is one request, unless his nodes are getting a lot of heavy requests with like multiple block information. I'm not an expert in that area, but I recall that once we had to put a patch on the mesh client because they were sending a lot of requests inside one single request, and I think they were failing. I don't know, but. It really depends on how you had your node running or your backend or how it is that you are serving. But Wait, so who's, who's, who's packaging? Would that be Grove? No, because they're the ones who send the request use. to user. Mm. Yeah, pro probably I will dig into uh, into some uh, logs on the on the mesh nodes. Have uh, probably enabled the uh, the debug mode and, and see what what happened there in terms of requests and responses. That would be a good start. I will do that. Yeah, I would think that logging the requests, you should see. You know, if you're using a lot more bandwidth, and I would expect to see that the yeah. the actual size of the requests of the data that's being sent back and forth is is higher, right? Yeah. That would be the expectation. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But I, unfortunately, I don't have a baseline or a reference line to compare with. But still, I will try to, to find a, a way to do that. Yeah, I would reach out in any of the groups, uh, like the Node Runner channel on Discord, or or you know any of the other technically minded groups, and get some comparative uh, uh, data from there. See what other people are seeing as well. Okay, thanks, Jinx. You got it. We've definitely had some customers reach out about batches, and uh, we've kind of set the expectation that we're anti-batch. Um, and so uh, we know that some node runners are savvy and just outright reject batch requests uh, because you guys don't get paid fairly with the current protocol. Uh, so if you want to keep doing that, that's fine. We'll continue to set the expectation with our customers that you shouldn't really be batching, and we encourage one request. Uh, and we're actually getting ready to unpack batches on our end, uh, not to send to you. Uh, we don't tamper with the request, but we're going to count the number of requests and then charge them accordingly. Yeah, so, um, yeah this can be a little bit of a, can, a dual uh, attack on customers. Okay. Beautiful. Cool. I didn't, uh, didn't know that. Customers can match. That's interesting. Yeah, the JSON RPC spec is. Uh, I wouldn't. I won't even really call it a specification. How about that? It's a guideline. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing about JSON, right? It's not like SOAP with XML, where you have a uh, uh, strict boundaries, right? Um, it, it's it will try to process whatever you send, and it just depends on the, the handler on the other side. Agreed. I think the biggest thing that we get a lot of gripe about is really just how it handles HTTP codes, because everything in JSON RPC is a 200. Yeah, 200 OK error message is? Yes. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> All right, y'all. So anything else?
I am happy to give you your time back before the holiday. Cool. Well, let's call it a wrap for this week then. And uh, we will see y'all same time, same channel next week. Thanks, everybody.